All right, I want to talk about this dream I had. I just finished reading, uh, where are we, a, a Luke 21, verse 27 and 28. And at last, when you see the Son of Man comes, surrounded with a cloud, with great power and miracles, and in the radiance of His splendor, with great glory and praises, it will make you jump for joy, for the day of your full transformation has arrived. One time I just... I went to bed and I had a dream. And in this dream, I was standing on this, like, uh, it was like an apartment sky or high rise, like, you know, a little skyscraper apartments. And uh, I could see in the apartment that uh, there was like above into the sky, there was these clouds. It was like, there were like rainbow hues. It was going like purple and pink and blue and red. And it was just hewing all these different colors in the, in the clouds. And it was beautiful. It was wonderful to watch. And then I heard screams of horror and terror all around me. It's like the people around me were, they were terrified. When I was just, I was in awe and wonder it's like, wow, these clouds are beautiful. It's like rainbow clouds. It was like the seven spirits of God just flying through the heavens. I don't know how to explain it. In the dream, it was so magnificent. What was beautiful and magnificent to me was utter dread and horror to those living in the earth. I heard them scream and they were just, they were trying to hide themselves from the, from the clouds. And as I looked up, I could hear someone screaming, he's coming, he's coming. And it's like, you could hear this. And it just, it went through you. It went through the entire world. It was like a clap of thunder. It, uh, it just this powerful boom. It was like, you know, when a plane breaks through the sound barrier, it was like that but it was like in a dimension breaking through our dimensions barrier. Just went, it went right through us. And as I was looking, he's coming. I, who's coming? My heart just began to with a love that I have never felt this strong before. And listen, I've been in worship where I, you, you see the tears rolling down my cheeks. That's because my heart is aching for him, for Jesus. And there was such, oh, I can feel it. There was such a love. It was, it was so, it was, it was painful. It was like a suffering love, not suffering from pain, but it was, it, it was a suffering love, suffering from being distant from me. It was a love so painful that if I did not go to the source of this love, I would die. It was too much. I was too in love. And I could hear the people on the earth screaming and in fear and in anguish and pain, not because of the love, because they were fearing in their selfishness from love. It, you might have thought like, well, wow, I am in so in love with him, but this was not my love for him. This was his love for me colliding with my love for him. And our loves connected. And I was on a skyscraper building. I looked down. I was like, oh, no. I feel like I have to just go to him, but I could die. If I fall to the ground and die, but you know what? Perfect love casts out my fear of dying. I didn't care if I died. This love was more important to me than death. It was stronger than death and it lifted me above. I basically began to lift off of the balcony with the thought in my mind that I could die, but I didn't care about death. I didn't care about my life. All I cared about was connecting my love to his love. It was stronger than anything imaginable. That was the rapture. 
It wasn't that he's coming for, to rescue us. No. He was coming to connect his love to our love. He's coming for those who love him. He is not coming for the religious prideful. They were screaming out in terror for their own lives. He's coming for his lovers to meet him in the air and to transfigure us into his likeness. And so shall we ever be with the Lord with no separation, no unhook of our love to his love. What is the wrap? It's being connected to his love where his love lifts you off of the earth dimension to be with him in the spirit and locked into the bride chambers forever. You're with him in, you know, bang, 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 bang. Open the door to us, Lord. I'm sorry. I don't know who you are. I didn't have intimacy with you. Lord, you know, I cast out devils. <laughs> I healed the sick in your name. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. You did all these religious actions, but where was that love that I could hook on to? Amen. Let's read about it. Oh yeah, basically, and he came down and I explained this dream to my daughter's school teacher the next day. Because I went to pick her up from school. And I was like, I didn't realize the impact that it would have on her. She's like, I have chills going through my entire body. School teacher. Let's go back to it. Let's go back and read a couple of verses. This is the coming of the Son of Man from Luke chapter 21. Expect to witness amazing and perplexing signs throughout the universe with the sun, the moon, and the stars. And the raging of the sea will bring desperation and turmoil to many nations. Earthquakes will bring panic and disaster. What men see coming to the earth will cause fear and doom to grip their hearts. For they will even see the powers of the heavenly realms shaken. And at last, when you see how the Son of Man comes, surrounded with a cloud, with great power and miracles and the radiance of His splendor, and with great glory and praises, it will make you jump for joy. Why for joy? It could be another. Jumping is leaving the earth, right? For the day of your full transformation has arrived. Amen. The lesson of the fig tree, Luke chapter 21. Jesus gave his disciples this parable. Haven't you observed the fig tree or any tree that when they bud and bloom, you realize that the season is changing and summer is near? In the same way, when you see these prophetic signs occurring, you realize the earth is yielding to the fullness of the kingdom realm of God. I assure you, the end of this age will not come until I have spoke what I have all I have spoken comes to pass. Earth and sky will wear out and fade away before the one word I speak loses its power or fails to accomplish its purpose. Be careful which, that you never allow your hearts to grow cold. Thus saith the Lord Jesus Christ. If you ever hear a thus saith the Lord, listen to this one. Be careful that you never allow your hearts to grow cold. You got to do that. Oh God, burn in my heart. No, no, no. You got to do that. How do you do that? I remember he used to rebuke was, do the works that you first did when your heart was burning. Remember when you first got born again, what you used to do? You worship God, you pray, you just surrender everything. And your hearts would begin to burn in those worship meetings. Do that. Repent and do the first works. Return to your first love. That was one of the rebukes in Revelation. Be careful that you never allow your hearts to grow cold. Remain passionate 
free from anxiety and the worries of this life. What does that mean? The only way to be free from the anxiety and worries from this life is to return to your first love. Perfect love casts out all fear, anxiety, and the worries of this life. When the worries and fears of this life come in, it's because you can look at your worship radar and you can always tell, like, yeah, I've put that off. Don't let me come and find you drunk or care in careless living, living like everyone else. For that day will come as a shocking surprise to all, like a downpour that trenches everyone, catching many unaware and unprepared. So keep a constant watch over your soul and pray for the courage and grace to prevail over these things that are destined to occur. That are what to occur? Oh, we can't stop it. They're destined to occur. One second, I gotta go to the bathroom. All right, I'm back from the bathroom. <laughs> you know, you ever wonder like Jesus, like when he preached and stuff like that for three days, you know, went up on a mountain, he's in there preaching. Where do you go to the bathroom? Like Jesus went to the bathroom too, you know? Like maybe you just find a place that, I guess they had like long robes on. <laughs> You know, I don't know, man. I was wondering about that. I wonder weird things. Anyway, I don't know where I left off. We're getting warnings from Jesus. Be careful. Be careful that you never allow your hearts to grow cold. Remain passionate, free from anxiety and worries of this life. Then you will not be caught off guard by what happens. Don't let me come and find you drunk or careless or careless and living like everyone else for that day will not come I mean whoops for that day will come as a shocking surprise to all like a downpour that drenches everyone catching many unaware and unprepared so keep a constant watch over your soul and pray for the courage and grace to prevail over these things that are destined to occur that you will stand before the presence of the Son of Man with a clear conscience Each day, Jesus taught in the temple and would spend his nights on the Mount of Olives. Hey, I just had a, I went to the bathroom and I, I was scarfing down some olives. And I was going to talk to you about it, but I don't, <laughs> the Mount of Olives. I don't know. There's something about olives, oil. Oh, lives, olives. <laughs> oh, man. I love olives. <laughs> Mine has like garlic in it and they're like in this, this, this sour, like pickled sauce. Oh God, just get us pickled in the olive juice. <laughs> pickled on olives in the anointing. Oh, but you know, there's something about the olive press. You need to get crushed. You'll get crushed to get the oil out. And that's a good thing. You know what the cherubim wings or the seraphim? One of those two. I can't remember which one it is. At their wings were with beaten, made out of beaten gold with a hammer. Uh, beaten. That means you're getting hammered by the by the by the by the, by, the, by his word of God. By the word of God, <laughs> you ain't getting hammered. How are you gonna fly like a cherubim? Hallelujah, man. We need to get hammered and crushed to, into place so the oil of joy squeezes out of us so that we don't try to block it up with our human reasoning, our pride, you know. Let's get that beaten out of us. Then we can fly like the cherubim or seraphim. I don't know which one of the... Made out of pure gold, purity. Only purity can fly with God. So, stand before the presence of the Son of Man with a clear conscience. So each day, Jesus taught in the temple and would spend his nights on the Mount of Olives. And all the people would come early to the temple 
courts to listen to the manifestation of the word he taught. Oh, that's the end of it. Aww. Chapter 22. We'll have to make another video for that. I don't even know where my bookmark is. Oh. So go get yourself some olives and pickle juice. And get smashed. Hallelujah.